back WNST, Towson, and Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are positively into a beautiful Labor Day weekend. I hope everybody enjoys yourself and parties responsibly and college football wagering responsibly. I'm going to let everybody out there know that we were wagging our fingers at them at Pappas on Tuesday. Anne Arundel County Executive Stuart Pittman joined us, as well as Leslie Shreve, my friend from Productive Day, talking about how to be a little bit more productive and strategic in your work. And of course, Ray Bachman, our longtime producer. We've been here 25 years celebrating our 25th anniversary. The cupcake out in front tells you so. Uh, Ray Bachman was uh, one of our original producers here, so it was a lot of fun to catch up with him down in Glen Burnie. We take the Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery back on the road on September 15th. It is a Friday. The Ravens will be 1-0 by then. The Orioles will have clinched by then, I guess. Uh, Tampa's in town. We're going to be down at Fadley's in Lexington Market. We're going to be joined by Coppin State President Dr. Anthony Jenkins, as well as new head coach Larry Stewart, who was uh, an old friend of mine. I've been on the air so long, I remember when he was a player. Uh, for Fang Mitchell back in the day. And also our friends at Window Nation, 86690 Nation. Uh, final reminder, 10% extra off this week for Labor Day. You buy two, you get two free, 86690 Nation. It's been a week since I've had this guy on. We talk Maryland lottery and gaming and sports wagering and all of these things as football begins. John Martin, welcome in. How are things at the Maryland lottery here? Are we decompressing a little bit here and sort of ramping up? There, there is plenty going on, Nestor. There is plenty going on here. At the, yeah, plenty of thing going on the Maryland Lottery. Um, you know, we, we have more fun than, as I say, people should be allowed to have. We Winners coming in every day. We've got events. We're out in the field talking to uh, the players. Uh, we're enjoying the, uh, the sports calendar and our sports wagering efforts. Uh, and always breaking news. Last night, we had a Mega Millions drawing. We had not one, but two. Tier three winners, which means they won $10,000. They had four of the five balls and the mega plier ball, so or the mega ball. So uh, that means they get $10,000. But in both instances, they chose not to play the mega plier, which is a multiplier. Talk about wagging fingers. You there know, you for go. an extra dollar, uh, they missed out on uh, $20,000. So they get a $10,000 prize. It could have been $30,000 had they spent the extra buck on the mega plier. We have two uh, winners in one in Montgomery County at Kemp Mill Beer, Wine and Deli, and the other in uh, St. Mary's County at Vino 2 Wine and Liquor. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, hopefully they'll be uh, coming their way shortly. Or they may be, as we speak, they may be working their way here. To, you uh, to deli, and it makes me think about a crab cake. I think, man, eh, maybe they got one there. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so State Fair is coming up here next week. I want to get into that a little bit because this is a your 50th anniversary. It says so right here with the old wishbone on it. We've been giving these away. Um, I don't say it's coming to a conclusion, but this has been going on for six months. B believe me, John, by the time I get to my 25 stories of glory, by the time we get to – they'll be happy that the 25th anniversary of mine's over with by <laughs> February. Uh, but but I am gonna, I'm going to lean into it because you guys leaned into this. It's been – been a good six months since you kicked off the promotion, but you have the opportunity next weekend to just give away a a, a butt ton of money, a lot of money. Five million? Is that the right number? One lucky player, Nestor, will be playing for the potential to win five million dollars, and it goes lot. like this: We have ten finalists already determined. So don't show up at the fair thinking you're going to win $5 million. Those 10 people have already been identified and selected, and they will show up on Friday, September 8th, uh, right before 6 p.m., and all 10 will join me on stage, and we will go through a uh, a lottery, if you will, a little game that we'll but play. But they've already we'll won kind of big, right, all 10 of these people? Uh, five people will win $10,000 that very night. Okay. That's a pretty good start. That's all a pretty right. good start. Um, so the next five will advance to the second round. Four of those people will win $25,000. Not bad. We'll be well with one lucky winner on stage who will then play a game and hopefully choose uh, a prize from $100,000 to $5 million if they're lucky enough to, to match the right configuration. So uh, a lot of excitement starts at 6 p.m. Friday, September 8th. Uh, if you're going to be at the fair that night, stop by, watch it, check it out. How many times you get a chance to see somebody win potentially $5 million uh, at the state fair or anywhere for that matter. Uh, but it should be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. A lot of excitement. 100,000 is the floor on this. They can, if, if they are the one left standing after nine people have, have gone by the wayside, their minimum win is a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's going to be a good weekend. Uh, in Timonium. Oh yeah. I can tell. That's a lot of crab cakes. 
Uh, that well, too many. That'll give you indigestion. That's a lot of cra- at any price. That's a lot of crap. <laughs> John Martin here from the Maryland Lottery. All right, so I, I will go back to lottery stuff, but I guess with the sports side of this, this is where you, as the executive director of the Maryland Lottery, would talk to people about. Look, football season starting. Um, my son admitted to me the other night that he has been betting on baseball, uh, and as a parent, I was like. Oh, that's right. It's legal. And I endorse it. And we talk about it and just do it responsibly. Just be, be, you know, don't be doing crazy things with this. But I had my first real super, super winner happen. A girl I dated 30 years ago stole my Facebook friend. She's a huge baseball fan. Um, She doesn't go to a lot of games. She went to the game the other night with her husband. They're from Pasadena. They went up to the game. And after the game, I saw them at the game drinking, having fun. They love the Orioles, the whole deal, getting squirted at the outfield. (laughs) And the next morning I wake up and it was at the top of my Facebook. She's like, I don't bet much, but like my husband and I, we went to the game. We wanted to have a little extra fun, and they bet a parlay. Oh boy! That Gunnar Henderson and Ryan Mountcastle would both hit home runs in the game. They had a long shot, little. They put a couple bucks on it. They won eight hundred fifty-three bucks. So she put the whole thing up. It's the first time somebody wow. in my world, in my timeline, has screenshot a winning and put it into my timeline regarding baseball, football. You know, people have been betting on football since long before you made it legal. Uh, but the baseball thing, I've said for a long time, like, who was betting on baseball years? I, I done radio for 32 years. The in, enticement to do it has reached my son, friends, people that don't consider themselves. Yeah, maybe they're a blackjack player. Maybe they play lottery ticket. My wife's a lottery player. We, I played horses for 35 years when I go to the track. I, you know, I'm not anti-gambling. It's just the opportunity to bet on baseball was never there. And you want to let people know that just because you won 853 bucks, slow the roll a little bit here. Yeah, but right. it, is, it is really – it's ubiquitous now in a way that a year and a half ago I never – even with you and I doing this together every week, I never felt like it would be that ubiquitous that my son would be in the house saying, yeah, I downloaded an app. You know, when I'm bored, I put five bucks here, ten bucks there, whatever. It gives me a little interest to watch the game. We're all watching the games now. So even my son's in on it. And my son, I don't think he's – he's never admitted he's gambled it out. I've never heard him go to Vegas, nothing. But he's enjoying it a little bit. You know, five years ago, 2018, when uh, it became obvious that uh, uh, the uh, um, the opportunity to get into sports wagering was going to be pervasive and, and run coast to coast, uh, there were people in the industry, um, veterans of the industry at that time who said, what? It's a low margin business. You know, the hold is, is 5%. It's, it's no big deal. Nothing to see here. Move on. And um, because they they were building on a model that they had grown up with in the you know 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, that's the way the business was. And then as these states come started to come on board, and the uh, the fan duels and the DraftKings and and uh, of their like started to get in on it, they started to offer things like parlays and offer uh, more creative wagering. It wasn't just, hey, it's the Packers and the Bears this week. Who do you got? I'm get, I'm laying five on the pack. Well, well uh, not you know, even that. that. Let's talk baseball, John. I've gone to Vegas a hundred right? times. Every time I'm in Vegas, half the time it's summer. I go in seven and a half. The pitchers are up there. The only thing you could bet on was win or lose in the pitcher. Like that right. was baseball betting, and no one did it because I didn't even understand that my last name's Aparicio. You know, I I, I still <laughs> don't really understand baseball wagering. Um, when all the numbers pop up in the the TV cast and plus one seventy five, and I I, I yeah. just it's not my it's not my parlance, it's not my vernacular. You know. So it has certainly become an industry that that our forefathers never imagined, and and you know they may after the fact say, oh sure we saw it coming. Nah, not likely. You know they were the ones throwing cold water on it, saying nothing to see here, move on and now five years later and today you can wager on pickleball did anybody know what the hell pickleball was five years ago i learned last year what pickleball was wow i learned that i'm too young to play it still yeah (laughs) but you'd be good at it i can tell well i have a competitive edge yes yeah i know i know so so yes you know baseball uh the 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 spectrum of sports that can be wagered on the parlay betting the things and all of them have a cautionary tale we preach responsible gaming. We preach education. Know what the game is all about. Know what you're wagering. To yeah, to watch a game and say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a parlay on Gunner and and Mountcastle hitting a home run. That's easy to understand. It adds to the enjoyment of the game. You put a couple bucks aside and you see what happens. Uh, but yeah, when you get into things that are uh, 
you know, plus minus and the variance, you know, first half, second half, who knows? Um, sometimes people get a little out over their skis. So please play responsibly, uh, have a plan, stick to it, uh, make it social, keep it fun and, and enjoy the games. Well, we would always say here, and I've been doing this 32 years, you know, don't chase bad money. You lose on Sunday going all in on that, that that's the beginning of, of a bad, bad, circle and we just want to let everybody know there's help out there it is very available now to download an app i have friends doing it our friends at hollywood casino in perryville of course our our friends uh uh, dave and uh chris up at greenmount station working with uh, bet parks so we encourage people to have a good time with this especially in the pennant race if you're watching games football starts college football this weekend as well just please please do it responsibly. John, uh, you know, back on to, to what we're talking about here locally and scratch-offs and the Ravens and Ravens season. You're now rolling out the Ravens um, scratch-offs. I don't have them yet. Ross sent me the email yesterday, literally in the middle of the night. I got it. She's like, hey, we got to get you some Ravens scratch-offs. And by the 15th, I'll have the fresh ones when we're down at Fadley's. But um, this is a game everybody's familiar with. And, and obviously, the prizes are really what sells it in that the affinity for the Ravens and tickets for life and – this trip you have going to Jacksonville later on this year, this has been your best scratch off ticket year after year, right? It, it, it delivers year after year. And, and regardless of the, of what the Ravens happen to do on the field and clearly when they have a great season, um, which they've had more often than not, you know, the, it, it, it's reflected in ticket sales, but you're right. Would people play not only for the top cash prize, which is $20,000 on our $2 Raven scratch off ticket and a hundred thousand dollars on our $5 Raven scratch off ticket, but they play for the experiential prizes, the second chance prizes, uh, which could be season tickets uh, culminate at the end of the year, season tickets for 20 years. Uh, that's a big event uh, that will happen uh, right around Super Bowl time, uh, but they can win season tickets for this year, season tickets for next year. Uh, they can have an on field experience we call pass for cash, which is a whole lot of fun that happens uh, at, at each and every home game. And yes, it's been this way for many years, pandemic notwithstanding. Uh, we, we postponed it, but uh, now we're post-pandemic and we're back with travel with the team. And this year's game, Jacksonville, Florida, we hope that uh, uh, the folks in Florida today who are getting pummeled with uh, with the hurricane are, are taking the precautions there and, and we wish them well. Um, but uh, in December with the Ravens in Jacksonville, uh, two winners will have a chance them uh, themselves and their guests to be on the team plane and go down. That's always a fun trip. Well, the weather's going to be better there than it is here that time of year. So it is kind of a, a wise trip. I've been down there plenty of times. Um, John, from from the, the baseball standpoint of Homer Riches, that's still going on for the rest of the month, right, on TV? You'll see winners, correct? We have, matter of fact, I, I don't have it here, uh, but we just selected our final – uh, um, participants for the remaining home games for the regular season. And we also have selected, and we're in the process of confirming with that lucky winner, the individual who has won the second $50,000 home run riches prize. As we talked about before, the first one was on the day of the 50th home run. Uh, and that was back middle of May. And we had a, a great winner for that. Um, she, she's a lifelong Orioles fan, and it was great to see her celebrate and all of that. And now we have a second $50,000 winner that we just selected yesterday, confirming today their, uh, the fact that they've won. So we'll let them know before we let you know. I think you can understand that. And uh, then we'll be announcing who that lucky winner is uh, very, very soon. 50 grand for playing home run riches. So uh, get out there. The Maryland Lottery sponsors all that we do here, uh, including our Crab Cake Tour. We were at Pappas and Glen Burnie this week. We will be at Fadley's in a few weeks. We're going to be at Coco's. I'm wearing my Coco shirt. New sponsor. We're going to be there later on in the month as well, getting around, eating delicious crab cakes, having great conversations. Uh, we uh, we had Stuart Pittman, Anne Arundel County Executive on, talking about Bay Bridges and talking about Richie Highway and talking about Anne Arundel. Kids going back to school. Uh, we also had uh, Leslie Shreve on talking about being more productive as uh, kids go back to school. We get a little bit more normalized especially after the plague and Ray Bachman telling uh, stories of glory around here. We have 25 stories of glory. Um, our first is this week we are releasing. I don't have the signs in here, but our, our famous purple signs, John, it is the 27th anniversary of the first ever purple sign on Friday, September 1st. It was the first ever Raven game as a, as a Northern Ohio native. I know you've, erase this from your memory, but we did steal the football team. We brought them here. They played their first game. It was against the Oakland Raiders. The Oakland Raiders are no more either, Uh, but this was September 1st in 1996. We had signs, and you'll appreciate this because you're a Cleveland guy. I bet you don't remember this at all because you weren't here. 
Uh, I wish I had one in here to hold it up. One sign said get nasty because that was like my theme and that's what we did. It's what the van said and all that. The other side said dump Trumpy. Bob Trumpy, you're familiar with, longtime sure. tight end for the Cincinnati Bengals where they never won anything. He was on television then. He was one of the broadcasters. He was quoted in Sport Magazine, defunct Sport Magazine. This is the summer we finally get our team back after 13 years and Ursa and all that. He wished us empty roads – cold hot dogs and warm beer uh, in writing Ooh. as we were just getting our franchise started. So you can imagine the 27-year-old version of Little Nasty Nestor, half a lifetime ago for me, because I'll be 55 next month, decided to print up 25,000 signs, take him out to Memorial Stadium, and literally the broadcast began when when kickoff – I have a picture of this. I'm, I'll be sharing it this weekend. <laughs> Everybody uh. had the dump Trumpy, get nasty signs everywhere on September 1st. So that was the birth. Really, it, it sort of launched us getting the radio station two years later. But we're going back into the Wayback Machine, and we're – you've inspired me, John. The mayor, All the work wow. you, you did with – I don't have wishbones, but I have get nasty and dump Trumpy signs. And I have Clover yeah. Cleveland signs, which you have seen. Yeah. And I have spanked yeah. the Yankee signs. So we're celebrating 25 years here. Of doing this, and I, I do need to ask you this, and this is my chance to give you a, a kick in the groin before we go ahead. Get into yeah, this. sure. What happened to the Guardians this year? I I looked up. Yeah. I thought that like, what ha- what happened yeah. the last six weeks with them? Like I thought they were like a good team. Yeah, well, no, they they were masquerading as as a as a 500 team all year long, and and uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. They they uh, pitching staff was decimated by injuries. Uh, all year long. So they had to, the good news is they had to really bring up three rookies from, from triple a to, to anchor the rotation. And they've all done very well in this great experience. And as you know, here in, in Baltimore, if you can get young pitchers pitching well, um, that's, that's a good thing. So, you know, the optimism reigns supreme for 2024, but this year, um, you know, Terry Francona has announced that, that he may be moving on. And I think there's, there's some of that. I think it's probably time for him to move on. Um, he'll still be with the organization. Uh, they have never had any offense, and they've stuck with, with with the with the Guardians' lack that the Orioles have in abundance is a pipeline of hitters. Uh, they don't have that. They tend to groom pitchers better than than position players. Um, so they're they're going to have to get some help outside, whether it's free agents or trades. Uh, to really shore up that uh, uh, those position player lineups. You know, the Duquette thing was grow the arms by the bats. That was like 15 years ago around yeah. here and what we did. It, I, I guess my cautionary tale is not even to like kick the Guardians fans. It's to tell Oriole fans. And then my wife and I were talking about this doing dishes the other night. I'm like, they're 35 games over 500. Like, I'm 55 yeah. years old. This hasn't happened often through Ripken, Murray, Weaver, like, you, you know, all of the years that we've had, all the players we bought, 96 and 97. I mean, even your Indians of that era, 95, yep. 90, really, really good teams. You got to win because, like, you know, there ain't no tomorrow. There's just right, like, next year, the optimism will be crazy for the oh, Orioles. That's absolutely. when it, that sophomore slump's real, and it's hard, really, really hard to be 35 games over 500 on September 1st. Like, like it's just never been done, and that's why I'm saying it's sort of rarefied air, and the reality is there's a whole lot more Guardians and Padres, and even as an Oriole fan, disappointing teams that had promise in the late 70s, let's sure. say, as an Orioles fan, it's really hard to be as good as the Orioles have been this year, you know? And it, and it right. came from out of nowhere that makes it even more enjoyable, but that makes me feel like it's that much more important, especially with Batista going down, that they maximize their October. You know, I don't, oh, don't want to be face-pressed to the glass saying next year – not when you're yeah. 35 games over 500. You can't be thinking about next year. And I don't think the fans should be thinking that way. No, absolutely. And, and I, I think most fans are. I mean, I've, I've got a shoebox full of tear-stained uh, uh, memorabilia of, uh, you know, gee, we were this close. No, if you get that close, you have to seal the deal. And you, we could be doing the show uh, in Los Angeles – uh, with the Angels or in New York with the with the lovely Yankees, and and where would we be? Um, uh, and a moment of silence for the for the New York Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah, you can't do it. You can't. No, you can't do it. So, um, yeah. I feel like so feeling bad gonna... for the Steelers if they go through. Oh, please. Hey, you right? know who I feel good about? What do you feel good is our, about? Is our winners. Our winners come in here on a daily basis. We've got some great winner stories. You can go to mdlottery.com and read up on them. And when you do, uh, going back to our Ravens kickoff, we had our very first $100,000 Ravens winner come into our um, humble offices here. A grandma from Hagerstown. 
So when you go to EmptyLottery.com, you'll love the story. Um, Is she playing a Ravens ticket? Playing a Ravens ticket. See, in Hagerstown, I had the mayor of Hagerstown on last week, and oh, there are yeah. Steelers fans up there. That's, uh, you know, good. Well, two things. In Hagerstown, you can't buy a Steelers ticket. You're still on this side of the border. That's fine. Good. So, um, but if you love football, and I don't know that grandma necessarily does, but she loves $100,000, she's going to share it with her five children and 12 grandchildren, and then have a little left over for their retirement. Boy, grandma, you may want to get an accountant to help you on that, because I think that that may be spread a little thin, but but that's okay, and uh, uh, great story, great story. I bet we also, the first thing she's going to do is go to Crumpy's and get a donut after 7 p.m. tonight. I've told oh, you that story, man. right? They have a donut joint there that opens at 7 p.m. And when I I was on the road trip, what a great ago, idea! When I googled it, I'm like, that's got to be a typo, right? I showed up at 6.45. There was a line around the block. It's in an alleyway. <laughs> hey, Hagerstown's great, man. To travel oh. in this state, you sending me out to eat these crab cakes everywhere. It's been the greatest thing ever. I love this state. I really do. So you, we, we have winners who uh, stories, again, I, I, I have to go to mblettery.com just to read them, to believe them myself. Because when well, I you hear had a winner them, Royal Farms of 50 grand. I'm looking at this in Pasadena, the mm -hmm. 50 years program. You had a winner at my old friend at White Marsh Plaza Liquors. Uh, Fritz Deicher sold a $50,000 winner of Cash Multiplier over there on Honeygo Boulevard. So you got this. You can't get any more local to me than people I know actually selling the tickets. Absolutely. Fritz does a great job out there. Unfortunately, he's an Alabama Crimson Tide fan. I uh, so. see you know that about him. Okay, of course I good. do. Okay. It's my job. It's, it's what I do. But, you know, what I also... I've been trying uh, to correct that with him since the 90s. Oh, probably, please, please. Um, we had a young lady, a uh, Baltimore County woman, who won um, $50,000 on pick five. But that's not the story. The story is she was leaving our lottery headquarters after claiming a second chance prize from a previous ticket decided she'd go right across the street to the rofo as you what? know well the one right I across the, the street at, right? washington boulevard buys her pick five ticket there bam fifty thousand dollars now that happens once in a blue moon speaking of blue moon segue tonight for those of you interested in things that happen in the atmosphere blue moon tonight I got the Perseid meteor shower about three weeks ago. I looked out the window and saw one. I, I did that in Montana, but I was like staring at the sky. I'm like, it's awfully clear. And then I, I saw one go and I'm like, man, nature's beautiful. You know, so uh, enjoy the blue moon. Please go out and play responsibly as you are uh, sports wagering here this weekend. Cause I know if you're inclined, you're all in on the college football here this weekend, the Terps playing uh, Towson and all that. And you and I, you towel off, I'll towel off and we get together next week. It'll be football season again. You and I can do the Browns Ravens thing. We can hate on the Steelers. We can all make fun of Cincinnati again. And we got like five months of that. Isn't that awesome? It's beautiful. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Some people think it's the holidays. No, no, no. Kickoff of the NFL and college season is, in fact, the most wonderful time of the year. All right. We got home run riches. We got the Ravens scratch offs out there. Potentially five million bucks next week in Timonium at the State Fair. And wow. of course, downloading and playing responsibly with all of your sports wagering, including Oriole parlays. He is John Martin. He's the executive director of all things, Maryland lottery and gaming. This might be the last time you see my little, uh, my little 50th anniversary scratch offs. Cause we're going to have some Raven scratch offs getting in here next week as the Ravens take on the Houston Texans. Luke is in Owings mills all next week. We're up late with Oriole baseball this week and next week as we go to Arizona and to Anaheim and we will be, uh, be back on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour trail on the 15th at Fadley's. Going to be uh, celebrating with Coppin State, our partner. We are the flagship of Coppin State Eagles, have been for a decade. Uh, new basketball coach Larry Stewart going to be joining us as well as Dr. Anthony Jenkins. I love having the doctor on. He runs the joint over off North Avenue uh, at Coppin State, and we're going to have a full preview for the, the season. Kids going back to school, and the uh, the leaves are changing. John, did I leave anything out? Did we, did we have any other winners at Wise Markets or any other place that I need to slide in here? You know what? I think you've covered it all, Nestor. We'll have more winners next week. Maybe a $5 million winner next Friday night. John Martin, the executive director of all things Maryland Lottery and Gaming, along with our friends at Window Nation. They put us on the road for the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. Make sure you're listening for our show from Pappas this week. We're at some great guests, including my old Kimo Sabi, Ray Bachman. It was just like old times, except I don't let him cuss on the radio. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore. Positive.